Learn the lore of Kingdoms 4. Hi, everybody. Matt, are we scuffed? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Let me figure that yeah. out. I was just logging in. If we're scuffed, we're acceptable levels of scuffed. How you be today? Hi, everyone. Tormented by Gnomes, Ninja Man Matt. This is Lunch and Lore. We're going to spend the next hour or so talking about our fictional world, the Four Kingdoms of Anakra. Matt, what's up with you? I am doing pretty well. I was trying to let know if we're scuffed or not, but I still have a Jenga ad play. So I uh, you're breaking up. Well. Really? Yeah. Huh. Let me see. La, 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 la. Yeah, you're fine now. I'm fine now? Yeah, you're good now. Interesting. Also, I'm reasonably, I'm reasonably sure that my uh, camera is super lagged for no adequately explained reason. That's so cool. uh, don't look at the screen if you're watching. Don't just, just don't look at the screen. Uh, <laughs> just put your hands up in front. Get a just, piece of paper. Find that piece of paper and just like glue it to the front of your screen in that one spot. Yeah. Don't look at me. Don't glue it. Tape it. Sorry. Tape it. Use the blue tape. That's <laughs> just, just, just in. Matt recommends gluing stuff to your expensive monitor. Don't worry so, about it. Uh, wherever uh, Gnomes currently has his thing, take white out and just smear it all <laughs> over the screen. It'll totally work. No. That is no a good idea. idea. That is an excellent idea. Uh, so today we're talking about the Western continents of. Bedura and Kiaz. Bedura's yes. up here. Kiaz is down here. Uh, you can see my stuff, right? Yeah, I can see what you got going on. All right, cool. This is Zerolek, right? Yeah. All right, cool. I, fi I figure, you know, if we're going to do this, might as well, um, like, label stuff, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, considering, you know, Irelek may look very different than that, depending on mm -hmm. what we end up iterating. But for now, that's a good placeholder for Irelek. Yeah, as long as we put the place there, we can always edit the specific later. Exactly. Is it going to be a several hundred mile landmass shaped like a, I'm not going to say, um, but it molecule. might end up being a shaped big old like volcano at the top of the water. <laughs> shaped like a molecule. That's all it is. It's just a molecule. Yeah. I don't think Irelek is nearly this big. I think it's like at most one hex right like 96 yeah. miles across like 100 miles across oh i don't think it's gonna i mean on the mortal realm i don't think it's gonna be anywhere close to that yeah and that's uh, the scale that we are here so i'm still gonna put a thing there but like if you zoom in it gets smaller you know what i mean i just kind of feel like this is small enough to where we understand that's the general shape of what that thing is going to be when it shows up and that may change as well who in the heck knows we're gonna we're gonna find out but oh oh my okay well there you go oh oh hello yeah, I mean it's it's less than ninety six miles across, right? Even though I mean, they have some. It, I, it is. <laughs> yes, you're right. All right, welcome to Irelek. Welcome to Irelek. It's the little one spot. Oh my gosh! <laughs> and again, if we zoomed in, if we created like the next layer of this map, it'd be even smaller. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Deal with it. You know, on the old ye oldie maps where they had like the dragons, like here there be we don't know. Uh, <laughs> The, the here we don't know is bigger than actually air like it would be on that map. Yes, that fake monster is larger. Than uh oh, we else. just lost your camera. Yeah, I did that. I should have warned you. I did okay. that on purpose. I'm I'm seeing if I can Perfect. fix the lag. Uh, hey, you know our, anyways, you okay. know what? Just don't just white out your screen. We already talked about this. Just white out the screen. Just white out the screen. Hi everybody. It's fine. We're talking about Kiaz today. Uh, specifically, I believe we were going to discuss. Uh, the furthest south you can go and then kind of work our way up from there, right? All right. So first off, this volcanic region is like thousands of miles across. Uh, we want to we want to start south of there, right? You said the furthest yes. south? Okay. Exactly. I don't remember much about this area. Let me pull up my other map which I won't be showing chat because it's inaccurate. It's full of lies. It is not to be trusted. Yes, not to be trusted. Uh, but why don't you start talking about this southern area? Everything south of this fall. First, you know what? I think this is actually more, more uh, time sensitive. This volcanic wasteland, you and I yes. know that's Ubuden. Mm -hmm. We know that when Arakura is killed with a blade forged by fire giants, um, Vindor kicks all the fire giants out of the Sky Kingdom, and that becomes like their home world. And Londakar is south of it. Is it down yes. here? Or okay, so Londakar is like. Mm -hmm. All right, let me just slap that label on there. 
because a lot of this is very pre and post, right? Yeah. Yeah, but as as of our current uh, timeline, this mm-hmm. this would be this would be accurate. Londikar, uh to the south and I mean south south and west. I mean, really, anything south of Ubadan is Londikar. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know if you want me to start getting into the yes, the, I do the meats and uh, potatoes of it. But uh, effectively, when Arakura was slain in the very site where for formerly a uh, corporal body when she was. Uh, uh, What's the word we're using again? Dis, uh, discorporated. Discorporated. That's right. Not disincorporated. Just discorporated. Uh, when the energy that creates uh, the sovereign was removed from the body, um, where that body fell uh, created this enormous mountain range. And from the crown of that mountain range became the actual crown. The capital of Londakar is known as the crown. And it was where the stone dwarves, the hill dwarves, and really uh, the ember, any any of the dwarves that that hold mountain sacred, uh, had come to that place. Uh, really, all dwarves in general are welcome there. This is not the homeland of the dwarves, but uh, to bring a real world uh, aesthetic to this, it's basically the Jerusalem of the dwarves. This is the holy land where all dwarves and giants, in essence, uh, seek to seek to come. We have the dwarves that had made themselves available on this place and they are basically crafting out this kingdom uh from Erakora's body uh like i said she turned into actual landmass and from that place you have obviously the material aspect of it there's going to be rich ores uh veins of gold all kinds of immeasurable wealth and resources that can be used to help found a kingdom but more importantly it's the the cultural uh, aspect of wh- how important Erakura was to all of the dwarves, uh, really all of the peoples of the mortal realm. Uh, we've talked about how each of the sovereigns kind of adopted each one of the main four land masses of the world as their own. Um, some of them a little more in depth than others. Uh, Kiaz, you know, effectively was Erakura's. However, the I mean the entirety of the mortal realm, uh, you know, took place from her shape. I mean, there's Obviously, air, uh, earth, and water, which make up the place, and then fire suffuses it all. Uh, but in essence, we have the fire giants who, yes, their leader was tricked. Their people were thrown into this basically uh, terrible standoff where the dwarves and even the giants all hate the fire giants. Uh, m- most peoples of Anakra who held the sovereign of earth close to their hearts uh, despise them. And that really wasn't how it was supposed to go down. And much like the other beings of the world, the giants loved the sovereigns, especially Aragora. And so for the fire giants of Ubadan, it is their goal to push down and eventually reclaim the crown as their own. Uh, they have this inherent want and need to be able to prove themselves. It, it, and it's weird because I feel like the fire giants, they're always seen as being this very like evil uh, group. And I feel like, and mate, you can correct me if I'm wrong on this, but in Anakra, uh, yes, there is a sense of selfishness, which, as we said, really, in the, the acts of good, evil, law, chaos, and all that, we kind of break things more so down. Is, is a creature more so kind of selfless, leaning towards good, or are they more so selfish? They only think of themselves and what they can get from the world, and that kind of leans them towards evil. And so in that essence, fire giants are inherently very selfish. They just want to collect as many people that they can use as their workers they want to collect as much resources that they can use to craft things and they're kind of like in a way uber dwarves in that essence where they just want to keep crafting and making and subjugating so that way they can keep making grander uh, edifices to their power and and more impressive works and so in that essence yeah they are evil as they're willing to take over those around them in order to make themselves grander and better and i believe that was what had led to their eventual uh, fall from grace when they were kicked out of the sky kingdom from vendor for killing Arakura, and they had to settle here uh they were trying to make bigger and better things almost in a way kind of like when uh god i'm getting the name mixed up when sauron had tricked uh all of the L- mm-hmm. uh-huh, in order to create uh all of the various rings in that kind of an essence like it was supposed to be a grand beautiful thing and it ended up becoming the <clears> instrument <throat> of their destruction quite literally and so, so now there, uh huh. Go ahead. Let's talk about fire giants for a moment. 
because yes. if you took a fire giant and raised them completely separate from their culture, what aspects are inherent to them? Because I think that what is inherent to them is fire, first off. And fire has connotations of energy and passion. It can be aggression. It can just be huge amounts of enthusiasm. It's drive, right? I think that there are subsets. I think that the whole subjugating other people in order to, because they're like, have you heard of a paperclip maximizer? Have we talked about that? Are, is it where you end up trading a paperclip up into a boat? Is that what we're talking about there? No, no, that's trading the red paperclip. A paperclip maximizer okay. is when you make an AI uh, and its purpose is to create paperclips. And so its whole purpose is just to make paperclips, but it's a smart learning AI. So then it realizes mm -hmm. if I have more resources, I can make more paperclips. Yeah. And then it starts competing for resources. As, and then it realizes any other life on this planet could threaten my ability to create paperclips. So therefore yeah. they all must die. I think that the fire giant instinct is more like that. Obviously not to that extent. It's not, they're not, they aren't paperclip maximizers, but they have this drive to build and create like that yeah. is absolutely inherent to them. And it's very easy when you are inherently big and strong to basically say, look, yes. all that stuff that you're doing, that's not important. You're going to help me whether you like it or not, because this is really important. Like I have to make the best, uh, cooking pot ever and uh i need ore and that that lithium isn't going to mine itself so get to it <laughs> yeah I, that makes a lot of sense i kind of see uh fire giants as being very uh and I'm, I'm not calling out middle management here as saying this is always like this but i see them as very middle management like hey you know mom and dad gave me an order to do this and what you're mm -hmm. doing is cool but obviously my thing is more important so i need you mm -hmm. to stop doing your thing and now you're going to do my thing for basically ever because mm -hmm. obviously Telling the earth is not as important as creating mountains and has, you know, has my thing stopped being important? No. Well, then I guess exactly. your grand your grandchildren are going to do it. But I think that that's also a very cultural thing because we, uh, in the name of not doing monocultures, there could absolutely be uh, strongholds of fire giants all over the world. Some of yeah. which are super friendly and get along with their neighbors and oh, don't absolutely. act like that. Um, no, but, this is for for me. This is specifically Ubudin, the uh, the you know the, the country nation of mm -hmm. Ubudin is specifically those giants that were connected to the to the fall when Erakor mm -hmm. was destroyed. These are the ones that settled here, and they had because, mm -hmm. like you said, they when they were kicked out of uh you know the 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 overworlds, they had settled here, and yeah, they could have technically gone anywhere. But the ones that were like, hey, no, we need to take the crown back on pure basis that we didn't do this we didn't mean for this to happen and we need to make sure that we can prove this and i think it comes from a sense of like this weird form of guilt of anger there's these this group of people just right next door to where they had settled saying like hey you're all wronged you know obviously the dwarves have to make sure they have a hand in not just going hey we're going to defend ourselves they're going to be pushing in and trying to punish the fire giant so there's this butting of heads where it's like you killed the one thing that was most important to us not like we didn't kill that we were tricked into helping that happen but we didn't want that as much as you didn't so there's this ideology conflict where they're butting heads about it one of them is holding a place that they see as being sacred and want to punish the person that they think is the cause of it whereas the other group feels just as wronged as they do and they want to be able to go to this holy place and give their pence you know give their uh what's the word i'm looking for like do the do 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 their own rights of of sadness, forgiveness, and making sure that they can atone for what has happened. And so these two groups, rather than working together, are just kind of bullheadedly fighting amongst each other. And that's what created these two in this in this point vast countries that have are able to, in their own mind, get all of this wealth, all of these resources, and build up strong. But instead of trying to either work on themselves or push out to help the world, they're just so focused on stopping the other person. This big old arms race. Yeah, like this Between border. Builders. This border right here is one of the most fortified and contentious places in Anakra, and it's huge. Uh, we made it far too large, uh, but you know what? This is a fantasy world. We can we can do that. Um, just like the mountains are a permanent fortress battleground of these enormous fortifications and, and incredible architectural works just staring at each other from across the horizon. And it's been like that for well, hundreds of years. To... And you have to figure like the, the, it would have started off with just the capital city right there on the border and the actual mm -hmm. founding uh, of where the fire giants had settled. And I can't do any arrows or draw anything on this. But from there, you got you kind of figure once they kept colliding into each other, kind of like armies, they ended up spreading their battle line out. And 
it didn't start off with like all of that land. Eventually, mm -hmm. both places ended up either kind of like how we're doing currently in War of the Sun. For those of you who aren't doing it, you know, definitely you know, feel free to chime into what's going on there, take over a, an NBC group and whatnot. Uh, but you have unclaimed land that either was taken over uh, by these individuals and spread out to where they can get an edge on each other. Because obviously, one would like to just encapsulate and swallow the other. Uh, but because both forces are able to throw so much manpower and industry into this war effort, because it is a war that's now lasted, you know, depending on what time period you're in, hundreds or thousands of years, um, it's entered into this kind of Cold War stalemate where both sides have pushed as much as they can go. They both are builders and fortifiers. They've made it almost impossible for really either one to be able to overtake the other. And they just slowly, over many years, kind of took over all the spaces around them until eventually this is where we've ended up. I think there's a point realistically where we would likely be able to kind of zoom that in. I feel like definitely looking at the map size now, that is probably way too many blasted fire giant lands. And I think the dwarves as well would probably be a lot more focused. I think if we kind of tightened it in a bit, that would make a lot more sense to allow these coastal areas for both sides to be able to, uh, to be utilized for other, other mm -hmm. beings, other nations would be able to rise up there. Um, but obviously they would want a port. They would want to make sure they can, do trade mm -hmm. and because they're not going to only be able to utilize what they have in their own lands eventually they're going to have to open up their borders and be able to collect more material because eventually you got a point where even though the dwarves started off with this huge cache of of resources by having the literal god of resources uh their body had fallen in this spot that they created a sacred site um whereas the giants just keep going down 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 like there's a certain point where when you enter into ubudan you have these skyscrapers that like just try to touch the clouds, but they're surrounded by these huge pits that just bore into the earth because they're just harvesting everything they can. I did some math from here to here is about as big as uh, the United States of America. That's pretty big. I didn't do the math on this boundary right here, but I think that the, the point of that is, so we want to narrow this, right? We're thinking we want to shrink this. Okay. Either we, shrink that, or if we leave that as long as it is, we shrink their, uh, not the land mass, but we shrink their influence over the land. So we're there mm -hmm. pretty much as like as close to their border as they can be while still being able to get the resources they need. Mm -hmm. So we need to, all right. So we like the idea of the huge battle line, but we think this is excessive. Uh, let's yeah. look at our, let's look at our two options. Option A is to geographically shrink this and yes. the most lo logical way i can think of doing that is either to narrow this whole thing with water like just make it a much higher uh -huh. so it's a land bridge or bring this desert down through here so that ubudin ends up being like here but not up here yeah we can do that having a I, again i can't affect your your what you have there but like you said mm -hmm. right where your mouse is bring those deserts down a bit to where that creates a natural barrier and we can even mm -hmm. create a mass of uh of mountains where that inland sea you see like below ubudin and to the east of londikar is you've got this inland sea there where if you put a bunch of really giant mountains in the in the, in the mouth of that uh then that would also help that considerably mm -hmm. all right so i'll I'll gussy this up with more terrain variety later because you can see how it's all just kind of the same desert. Yeah, 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 of course. Of I'll course. dock to this. So this massively shrinks Ubudin. And then were you saying cliffs along like the edge here? Uh, yeah, like uh, a little bit north of that. Like, like, a, like a mountain range that starts inland and then moves towards the, uh, the sea. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I wish you had a pointer. I wish this version of screen sharing gave a you a pointer. You're basically, you're basically right there, though. Um, I, oh. A little to yeah, the left. Can... No, a Wait, little back. A, a little, you see that little patch of desert that's like two squares above you? Mm -hmm. So you see that range of mountains above it, those volcanoes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had that as being like, oh yeah, these are the edge of Ubudin's borders. Like we can just say that like those are mountains that either you can eat. I think one thing that would help is that in this mountainous area, it's not necessarily controlled by Ubudin. You have this collection of mountains and inside of these mountains, someone had mentioned like you've got like trenches. Um, Mm -hmm. you would have this interfighting between these you'd have a collect 
when you send out like miners and whatnot, it wouldn't just be miners are going out. You would have adventurers that are sent with them, guard patrols that are sent with them, because you have infighting happening in these mountains. You have territory controlled by both sides um, with different, you know, fortresses or strongholds within these mountains, and it's contested territory. So you end up with, I think we really should, from the desert to these mountains, you have this enormous, absolutely several hundred or several, maybe even 1,000 long walled battle line. It's just this enormous uh, mm-hmm. set of structures that, 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 that border both the kingdoms. And then just on one reason why the dwarves fight so hard, it's just on the other side of that is their capital. And then same mm-hmm. thing, like we have Ubudin, which has been basically just tearing their land apart, digging deep down to get the wealth that is beneath pulling more and more nearby nations under their umbrella until eventually they hit desert, not useful. They hit water, can't go any further, or they get to a point where they're spreading out so far that they're then weakening themselves by going out too far. And so they have to kind of just safeguard and hold what they have. So that's we'll make kind of vi- where we're going to end up. So this right here, will make this sort of the, the border, the battle line I, between, I think that's a good idea. Okay. Between loan to car. And then where do we actually want to put loan to car itself? The crown. Well, you're you're pretty good at this little map making part of it, but I would say not not far. Like when you're on the battle lines, uh, mm-hmm. you should be able to see. It, it should ground. be like adjacent. Like, it should be here. It should be mm-hmm. around here, right? Maybe like yeah, right here, like yeah, right see, here. Like, yeah, yeah. In that little pocket, it's in there somewhere, mm-hmm. and it is it is viewable from the battle line. Right. Cool. There was a point, 